Okay, so this is the sheet we worked on on Monday. You should hopefully have it with you. Um, if you do, take it out in front of you. Um, I've written at the top, again, pay attention to state symbols. We've just looked at the difference that being molten or aqueous makes to your products, okay? So it's really, really important that you pay attention to it. When they're talking about molten, they can use the word molten, they can use the word liquid, or they can just use the state symbol L, which is, that's a lowercase l in brackets. They all mean the same thing. They all mean that you've just melted, oops, they all mean that you've just melted your ionic compound and that there is no water present, okay? If there's no water present, then there is no H plus or OH minus, so hydrogen is not going to be one of your products. If, on the other hand, it is aqueous, or AQ is the state symbol, or in solution, aqueous and in solution mean exactly the same thing, okay? That means you have dissolved it in water. If you have water present, you've got H plus and OH minus, and it may affect your product at the cathode, okay? So I'm gonna do the first few with you, then I want you to do them by yourself, and then you can come back to the video and look at the answers. So the first one is molten. Sodium chloride, we've already seen this example before, okay? It's molten, there's no hydrogen or OH minus ions. I've just got Na plus and Cl minus, so my products are simply sodium and chlorine. So that's sodium, sorry, at the cathode because the cathode is negative and sodium is positive, so it'll go to the cathode. And then at the anode is positive, chlorine is negative, it will go to the anode. Just make sure you're writing your product as chlorine, not chloride, you're getting the element. So you have to write it as it appears in the periodic table. The next one, I have got molten. Okay, again, it's molten, there's no uh, water present. So my ions are just sodium, Na plus, and bromine, Br minus. Okay, bromine's in group seven, just like chlorine, it's got a minus one charge. Your product then is just going to be sodium, and bromine. Next example, I've got lithium oxide. Lithium, again, if I look at my periodic table, lithium's in group one, it has a charge of plus one. And oxygen is in group six. If it's in group six, it's got a charge of minus two. So that's where I'm getting those charges from. Don't be confused by the fact that you've got Li2O there, okay? That just tells you that you need two lithiums to balance the two negative charges on the oxygen. So lithium's in group one, it's got a plus one charge. It's always got a plus one charge. That two just tells you that you need two lithiums to cancel out the two negative charges on the oxygen, okay? But when I'm just writing the ions present, I can ignore those little numbers. I just want to go straight to my periodic table. Lithium's in group one, its charge is plus one. Those little numbers in the formula are not going to affect the charge at all, okay? So just look at the groups. Um, lithium's positive, it's going to go to my negative cathode and I'm going to get lithium made at my cathode. Oxygen's negative, it's going to go to my positive anode and I'm going to get oxygen as my product, okay? Then I've got liquid calcium chloride. Again, liquid, no water present. Calcium's in group two, it's two plus. Chlorine's in group seven, it's minus one. Again, the formula here is written as CaCl2. That does not change the charge on chlorine. Chlorine's in group seven, it's got a minus one charge every single time. The reason you've got that little two is to tell you that you need two chlorines to balance out the two positive charges on calcium. But the charge on chlorine itself does not change. That little number isn't going to change the charge. Calcium two plus is gonna to go to the cathode because opposite charges attract. And chlorine is going to go to the anode, okay? At this point, if you haven't actually done these yourself, pause the video, do them yourself, and then turn it back on and check your answers. There's no point in just sitting here listening to me do it. You might think you're following it. You're not gonna know until you try the examples by yourself. So I'm gonna continue on, but if you haven't done these yourself, then pause, do them yourself, and then turn it back on to check. Um, the next one I've got is magnesium bromide. Uh, again, this little state symbol here, L, it means liquid, there's no water present. I've got magnesium with a two plus charge. I've got bromine with a minus one charge. I've got magnesium and I've got bromine. Uh, liquid again, potassium's in group one, K plus, Cl, group seven, Cl minus, potassium and chlorine. So what you'll notice is that the metal is always forming at the cathode, okay? Metals always, always lose electrons, so they always form positive ions, and they're always going to go to the cathode, okay? Every single time, oh, what have I done? 
they're always going to go to the cathode every single time. Okay. If you don't know which one the metal is, look at your periodic table. Okay. Metals are all here on the left. Or if you just look at the name of the ionic compound, the metal is always the first word. So if it's sodium chloride, sodium zoo metal, sodium bromide, sodium zoo metal, lithium oxide, lithium zoo metal, and the metal is always going to the cathode. The non metal, which is the second word, they're always going to the anode. Okay. So even if I don't write out my ions here, I can easily predict what my cathode and my anode product is going to be. It's liquid, which means it's aluminium and oxygen there's no water present uh here i've got molten molten and liquid mean exactly the same thing so i'm still getting aluminium and i'm getting chlorine molten again no water present so i'm getting calcium and i'm getting oxygen liquid no water present i've got magnesium and i've got oxygen next one copper chloride i will do the ions with you on this one uh, copper chloride, um, you can't just look at your periodic table and find out the charge on copper, okay? It's a transition metal, so it's not in one of the main groups. So what you have to do is look at what it's bonded to, okay? It's bonded to two chlorines. Chlorine's in group seven. Chlorine's got a minus one charge. That tells me that copper needs two negative charges to balance out its charge. If it needs two negative charges, then it itself must be plus two. Copper is plus two, you've got two chlorines, that gives you minus two overall, plus two minus two, your charges have to balance overall. So copper is gonna be two plus, chlorine is gonna be Cl minus. Even if you didn't get that, oh no boy. Even if you didn't get that, you should hopefully still have the right answer. The metal is gonna to go to the cathode, the non-metal is gonna to go to the anode. And the next one, iron oxide, again, you've got oxygen with a two minus charge, it's bonded to one iron, Iron must have a two plus charge. Those kind of charges are gonna cancel. Even if you didn't have that, metal goes to cathode, non-metal goes to anode. Zinc oxide, again, liquid. Zinc must be two plus because oxygen is two minus. You've got zinc, you've got oxygen. Copper oxide, okay. Oxygen here is two minus. We've had that already. I needed two coppers to balance out those two negative charges on oxygen. If I needed two of them, that tells me that each copper only has a plus one charge. That's why I needed two of them to balance out the two negative charges on oxygen. Again, my answer is just gonna be copper and it's gonna be oxygen. And then again, we've got lead chloride. Lead, I needed two chlorines to cancel out the charge on lead. Lead must have a plus two charge. I need two chlorines to balance it out. Lead and chlorine. So all of these examples have been examples of molten. I know it's molten because it said either molten or liquid or use this little state symbol L, okay? There's no water present, so hydrogen was never my answer. But the next couple of examples we're gonna look at, you see that they're all going to be aqueous. Hydrogen is a possible answer and it's gonna change how we do things. Again, this video is gonna get a little bit long, so I'm gonna make another one. Um, if you're confident doing these, just continue with them yourself and then check back into my other video to get the rest of the answers.